Now, let's talk about call span and row span. So what call span does actually is it allows you to merge columns together. And row span lets you merge rows together, right? So let's see how to actually do that and what it would look like. So back here in our table, <clears throat> we have this data. Let's say we want to add another, we want, uh, we want to add two more columns over here and we'll call that, uh, we'll add two more columns, right? So we'll call th, we'll call this work x, right? And we'll call this one uh, years, right? I actually will call this uh, company company right so we'll say company and years actually let's bring years first okay and company great now let's do the same thing let's add let's fill these let's fill these uh, rows for John Ashton and Jesse so let's do that again so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write td into 2 and let's say for for John he has done 5 years okay and he's worked at uh, something incorporated okay so there we go so this is how it, what it looks like and let's add that for Ashton as well let's add another td into 2 and we'll call her she, she's worked for six years and she's worked at somewhere company okay and for Jesse we'll do the same thing T into td into 2 and Jesse's worked at uh, so he's worked for six years at somehow uh, limited <laughs> somehow limited okay all right so this is the table we have now so you can see we have an years column and we have a company column and each of them are filled with data for John Ashton and Jesse now let's say we wanted to call this column uh, we wanted to merge these two columns into one column and just call it let's say uh, uh, we, we, we want to call it work X so how do we do that? We can use the call span method. It's not a method actually. We can use a call span attribute for that. For that, right? So we come to. So let's say we want to call this work x actually. Let's say work x, right? So this changes to work x, and we want work x to span two columns. So what we would do is in this work X, we would come here and we would say call span because call span is an attribute of table. Call span is equal to two. And save this and you can see that work X, that this work X cell spans two columns. Now you can see companies thrown out of the table because work expands two columns. Company has been pushed to another sixth column because technically there's one, two, three, four, five. And since work expands two, company will be the sixth. But we don't need that, so we're just going to comment that out. So save this now, and you can see now work expands two columns. Great. We can even do this across rows. So how do we do this? Okay, let me show you row span. So let's say that John didn't work all his five years at, at something Inc. He worked three years at something Inc. and two years at another company. But it's still John, so how do we do that? What we can do is we can duplicate John's column, 
right? I pay, copy that and I paste it in here, right? And if I save this now, you see John appears twice because we just copied and pasted that. And let's change something ink to another ink and we'll give that uh, two years and something ink is three years, right? So you can see John, and first it was five years, now it's three years at something ink and two years at another ink. But we can use something called row span so that John, male, and number one appears only once. So it looks like it's just one row, All right? Let's do that. What we would have to do is come into John's column and say, just like we did for call span, we'll say span this cell two rows. So we would say row span is equal to two. When we save this, you can see now one spans two rows. So what's happened is it's pushed off the one in the second row to the side. So what we can do is we can just comment this out because we don't need that, right? Now we do the same for John again. So we say row span is equal to two. Oh, sorry. It has to be inside. Row span is equal to two. Say that. And you see John also gets pushed to the side, right? So we don't need John. So we can group male also together, right? So you can see now one spans two rows, so does John. We'll do the same thing for male, right? So we come back into this and we write row span is equal to two for male. And we don't need this male in the next row. So we need only this one. This male is going to span two rows, so we don't need this one. So we're going to come to the second one, and we're going to comment that out, save it, and there you go. So I just merged this cell into two rows, which is one, two, and three here. So we have just seen work X using call span, and we did row span for one, John, and male. Now, let's say we want to target, we want to highlight Ashton. Okay, so how do we do that? So we can do that by applying some CSS to, we can apply, we can do that by applying some CSS to this, to this, uh, to this row. So let's come down to Ashton. And how we would apply CSS. Now you don't need to get into the details because you haven't learned CSS yet. But let me just show you how you can style specific rows. So we can come into, into the row. The row that we're, that we're trying to target is Ashton. So that's this one. PR. Ashton's here. So this is the row. right? So we say style is equal to. Let's say uh, border will be three pixels solid blue, right? I save that and you can see that Ashton's row has a border of three pixels wide. It's a solid line and it's blue in color, right? So how do we target columns now, right? We have a TR table rows but we don't have the TC or anything for table columns right so how would we do that if we had to do this individually you would have to let's say if we wanted to highlight this name column right there's no way to do that other than individually going up to name applying a style here then applying a style to John then applying a style to Ashton then to Jesse. But that's a very tedious process. So how do we target columns entirely? That's where call group 
and call come into play. So let me show you how that's done. So let's say I wanted to target this uh, one, two, three, four, the fourth column where I talked about the years, right? So what I would have to do is right at the top of the table, I would set up a call group, right? And call group has now that there are these many columns, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five. So there are five columns, right? So we say call into five, right? So now the first instance of call will target the first column, the second name, the third sec, the fourth, this column here, and the fifth, the company name. So let's say I wanted to target this column. So I would apply a style for the fourth column. So we're here, let's say style is equal to, just like we did for Ashton's row, uh, we can do something else. Let's say background color is, uh, let's say aquamarine, right? And I save this. And now you can see that the fourth column is highlighted. You see, if I shifted this statement to the third column, like that, you would see. So that's how we target columns, okay, using call group and call, right? Now let's see how we can, so now you've seen everything related to tables. What we can also do is we can set, we can nest tables within cells within a table. So let's say we have this somewhere co and uh, within this company, Ashton actually worked on three different projects. So, and we want to list those. So let's say we can do something like that. So we, we would come down to this column where somewhere co is to that cell, sorry. Come down and we can say, we can add another table inside here. So we say table, and we would say table row, just like we did before. And then we would add, let's say three columns or three cells, right? So it's TD in two, three, right? Save that, and you can see that somewhere code is gone. And you can see three small cells over here. It looks like that because we don't have any data in it. So let's actually put some data in. So that's prod one, prod project two and project three. So there you go. So th we have a table within a table. So this is called nested tables. Now, finally, we have something called caption. Okay, so captions provide a subject for the table, right? So let's come back in here. Let's minimize this, sorry. So this table will have a caption. Let's say we use a caption tag, right? So we would say this one has somewhere co as the caption. Somewhere co projects, right? There you go. That's the caption. We can also apply a caption to the main table. So let's do that. Uh, table. And we'll apply the caption right at the top. Uh, we'll call this uh, app. No, we'll call this employee. No, we'll, we'll call it applicant data. Save that. And that's that. So that's pretty much it about tables. So just to recap, let's go back all the way. Now we use tables to quickly find content, okay, to understand the association between between content and to look at the big picture. A couple of things that we have gone through is the table tags. TD is every little cell so that applies, that's called table data. Table row can be used to, to, uh, to prescribe different rows inside which you can have table headings and table data. And finally, we used call span to merge columns, to merge cells via columns. 
and row span to merge cells via rows. Then we have call group and call to target specific columns if you want to maybe apply different styles to them. And finally, we have caption, which can allow you to uh, provide uh, a heading for the entire table. And you could also nest tables. That's pretty much it for tables, and I'll see you in the next one with forms.